Southern California has some beautiful hummingbirds, and one just happened to pass by our yard while migrating back for the summer. And he is an Allen's hummingbird, and I've affectionately named him Arnie. So I started photographing him. So we're gonna go on a journey learning how to photograph hummingbirds. So how do you attract a hummingbird? Well, the easiest way is to put out a feeder. But what do you put in that feeder? If you do a quick Google search, you'll see there's some serious misconceptions about it and people just really don't know. It's just a simple ratio of four parts water, one part sugar, and change it out every week or so. That way he doesn't have stagnant water in his feeder. Also, I put links in the description if you liked this one. Now let's talk about composition and why it matters how you set up your shot. The first thing to keep in mind is your position relative to the sun. Notice how our shadows are pointing at the bird? That's because we want him directly lit for two reasons. One is because we need a super fast shutter speed, which we'll cover that in a minute. And two, some male hummingbirds have iridescent throats known as a gorget. I noticed that Arnie's gorget can look really dark if it's not catching the light. In some of my photos, his gorget looked brown and black while in other photos, it looked bright, brilliant orange. As you can see, bird watching requires patience, so I found it best to set up on a tripod. This way, I can set up a remote shutter and not have to wait by my camera for that perfect moment. Something else I use is Imaging Edge Mobile. This is a great tool that lets me see the screen in real time. So I can be in the house getting a drink while he's out there getting a sugary drink, and I can still get the shot. If you're seasoned in photography, you can photograph a hummingbird. Now, I won't lie to you, it's not easy. Even some of the best bird photographers I know have said it's very hard to photograph birds, especially birds that beat their wings at around 60 beats per second. For that, you're gonna need a super fast shutter speed. Right now, I'm around 4,000. You could go even faster than that, but my camera looks about the best around 4,000. I'm also shooting with a wide aperture so that I can allow for as much light as possible. With the a7 III and my 200 f4 lens, 5.6 seems to be about the best aperture to get enough of him in focus and still let enough light into the sensor. Here's a fun fact for you. These amazing birds rotate their wings in a figure eight pattern, which makes them the only birds that can hover in place. That's why you're gonna want that super fast shutter speed so that you can freeze their wings at their endpoints. Now that we've dialed in our settings, let's set focus. Here, I'm manually setting focus using a card that I've taped to the side. I've also plugged all but one of the feeder spouts to encourage Arnie to go to the exact spot I've set focus to. This works just fine, but I actually found an easier way. If your camera has animal eye detect, you can let it do all the heavy lifting. A super helpful tip I learned is that if you can get the eye in focus, you can get the bird in focus. A couple things I'd like to say. This didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of patience and a whole lot of practice to be able to photograph hummingbirds. And I wanna give a special shout out to someone who really helped me step up my game. Mr. Steve K is a professional wildlife photographer and public speaker. He is an incredible resource and a wealth of knowledge. And I just wanted to shout him out right here. So if anyone's interested in learning how to photograph birds, he's so generous with his time. If you go to his website and you reach out, leave a comment or email him, he actually gets back to you. Highly recommend checking out his website at stevek.com. 